president now, is doing so so. Wait, wait, let me come in there. But this is it's good to yeah, it, of course, even on national television. Yeah. That tells you how diverse we are yeah, as a group. Yeah. It's not about yeah. one man's thinking. Yeah. Now, where my, my colleague needs to understand is this. Our currency is limited by our borders. Mm -hmm. So beyond our borders, our currency is useless. Mm -hmm. With all due respect. Mm -hmm. So you trade with a foreign currency. So when you bring in your commodity, the currency in which you traded for um, internationally uh -huh. must be converted into a currency. Mm -hmm. That is why we need a rate of exchange. So fortunately or unfortunately, it is the nature of our currency. Now, let's see how we can help address that problem. What's that? I, I What's believe that? in What's that? Solution. solution. Government can take a data. Per where I sit, I, I, I know we don't have less than 5 million people importing or 5 million imports coming to our country yearly. Now, if you take a data of such importers, what you do is simple. You create a system like a free port system. When you say free port, doesn't mean the port is free, but by then charges and levies are low. So what you do is get a five million importer. Let's say I am importing 100 containers this year. So government has a platform. So I go on that platform. I log in. I declare so so and so Jacob Ajeman. I intend to import 500 or 120 foot containers this year. Per each container, 20 foot, government, give me a fixed rate, $500, $1,000 per container, irrespective of the commodity I have in, provided it's legitimate. It is being done in Nigeria. So if you import a full spare pass, 40 foot container, they can charge, let's say, 50,000 CDs in our currency. If you import one engine in a 40 foot container, 50,000 Ghana CDs. So it is incumbent on you, the importer, to bring in quality and affordable products. So if government do what I'm talking about, the important news is that if he brings a car or let's say a, a truck, a, a container of let's say four cars, he's paying let's say $2,000 or $4,000 irrespective of the type of cars in it. He knows his amount that he's paying. January to March, all these importers go on the platform, make the data, data input. They tell you the quantity of containers they are bringing. Multiply by the amount per container they pay to you as a government. So by the time they even import, they have already collected the revenue. Oh. Now, when that comes, you reduce the risk of corruption at the port. Because they are not exposed to any government taxes again that anybody would then bring in something that they are not supposed to pay. Government, you have secured the revenue ahead of time. You have facilitated trade. Some time ago on this same platform, I said that our trade focus is more revenue driven Instead of trade facilitation, facilitation yeah. we must reverse to trade facilitation. And when you do this, you go back to trade facilitation. That will help government get its revenue mm. so that the importers will also be comfortable. Okay. Commodities will be low on the, on the market. One who asks, what about dumping of goods in our market? Because it may make duties cheap. What you then do is you either restrict the import of certain commodities or even prohibit it. Mm -hmm. Those we have the capacity comparatively and competitively to do it. Okay. Either you prohibit or ban it. Those we don't, you restrict it gradually. For vehicles, you give the MTTD a period of, let's say, three to five years. What they do is, for the three to five years, all vehicles beyond three years or five years should go to the scrapyard. We have huh? still... Look, listen, if you set up that policy and this man is bringing, let's say, a container of four vehicles and he's paying four thousand dollars he can sell that car one car maybe twenty thousand Ghana cities cars will become less expensive so why do you have to keep old cars in the system hmm. i see we have a lot to talk about in the time and the time so what we'll do is that we would have to uh, get another date uh, where you come around and then we talk because there's also the railway and all that yeah. uh, unfortunately unfortunately sure. our time is up uh, time. Mr. Jacob Ajiman, you just heard this question. Um, this is uh, the General Secretary, uh, Mr. Samuel Asel, and of course, Mr. Vincent Aite Odonko, National Organizer. All of them are from Transport Forum Ghana, and we've been talking largely about issues of transport. So we'll make another time, we'll talk about railway, because that railway system thing, huh, it's a matter. <laughs> Till now, I've not seen anyone co any of them completed and all that. Just a second. I want to tell the President. Right. We voted him. He said... He is coming to do Ghana better. Okay. But I think in his last speech, mm. he said we should all help. Mm. When he was coming, he did not ask us.
to well. help him. Okay, he said you fix it. Uh, good. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> so that's can, it. Can, can I make the last uh, time? Quick, we quick, we quick, let yeah. leaders to solve problems mm. that they don't experience. I okay. think that's one of the things we need to check. Okay. They don't buy fuel, they don't buy food, they don't buy water, they don't buy power, they don't sit in traffic that we sit in. Mm. Transport from believe that some of these things will have to be yeah. withdrawn. Hey. So that when they feel our heat, they will solve our problem. Then let's let's also uh, vote for parliamentarians who are correct, 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 because those people who are always well, NDC are you going for some? No, 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 I'm not. Not yet.